Hello and welcome to my channel. Um, what follows is a portion of the Fireside Chat podcast that I did with Quipster recently. Uh, the whole podcast is in the Deployment Zone. It's one of the regular podcasts that we do in the Deployment Zone. I've put up a whole podcast, Fireside Chat, before with Quipster and Mini Wargaming Dave on YouTube because it was too good not to share with the whole YouTube verse. And when I was listening to this one back before I published it in the Deployment Zone today, I realized that this clip might help some people. I get asked about my mental health journey after I put up that video a year and a half ago. Um, and this answers some of the questions that people ask me. And I, I thought it might help someone. Hopefully this might help someone out there. Um, they say the truth is like poetry and most people hate poetry. Well, there's no poetry in this clip, but there's definitely a lot of truth. And so hopefully it doesn't call in, it doesn't alarm a lot of haters out there. But yeah, it's just meant with sincerity and yeah. Um, so if you're having problems with mental health, maybe this can help you. I do ask for all the commenters, if there's anyone connected with mental health charities, or if you know any mental health hotlines or things from the countries that you're listening to, that you're in, that listen to this, then um, write a comment saying, call this charity in this country, call this charity in this country, call this charity in this country. And if everyone in the comment sections thumbs up those links the most, then anyone who's listening to this can scroll through the comment section because the most thumbs up ones will stay at the top of the list. So if you're in Finland or America or Canada, then just thumb up all those comments. Um, and I'll, I'll put some links in the, in the video description as well for the UK charities. And maybe we can, between us, we can have the, the links and the numbers at the top of the comments list for anyone who might need some help. Maybe we could do this together. Anyway, um, here's my story. Excellent. I love it. So kind of on a, on a more serious note, I guess, and like we can, I can edit this out if you want, and we don't have to talk about this, but just in terms of the mental health journey and like where you are now, how is everything going? Uh, yeah. So, I am, I am, I want to say I'm not better. I am getting better. So I am miles away from hell now uh, compared to where I was a couple of years ago. The things I know a lot more about my mental health. I know a lot more about mental health in general. I know how long it affected me before the diagnosis and looking back to the occasions where I was, there's, there were occasions last year and the year before where I was literally catatonic and couldn't move and couldn't speak, um, suicidal, all those things. So I never thought I would get out of it, um, but I have. And I've come, and then I came off the meds and went back on the meds, and I'm still on the meds now. I've come to realize that it is a process, it's a journey, and most of the time I'm okay. And by okay, it means I have some feelings again, and I have some wants and some direction again. Um, and sometimes those wants and those feelings are very positive and very focused, and I've got energy, which is good. Um, and very few occasions, there's very few occasions where I'm wiped out by it. And on those occasions when I am wiped out by it, the periods are growing further apart and shorter in time. Um, my base level is not normal, but it is not suicidal anymore so it, it's 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 not normal but it's okay it's manageable it's 
it's it's i'm getting to the point where this is funny because i make 40k for a living and i'm waiting to go back to work next week and (laughs) i'm having fun all the time and i'm waiting to get to the point there's been a couple of occasions where i feel like yeah life's good life's good but that's only occurred to me i've only felt that only a couple of times i should given my circumstances be feeling that a lot more but the fact that i'm getting there is good so long story short i'm getting better um and i'm looking forward to I, i'm getting better and the trajectory is generally always getting better the side note is the long-term consequences the things that it's done to my memory and my ability to concentrate my my imaginative process and my cognitive process, the juice in my brain, my brain is a bit gummed up. It's a bit sticky. Um, so I can't think as cleanly, concentrate as cleanly, imagine as cleanly. Uh, my attention isn't caught as cleanly as it was before. You, you can definitely feel to some extent some of the neural scarring that must have taken place, which sucks. Um, because one of the things I, I was always extremely imaginative. I couldn't go on holiday somewhere for longer than a day without a pad and paper because then I would start writing or I would start drawing. I couldn't, like I said, that fidgeting thing. I can't sit somewhere for hours and not do anything. I, that wasn't me, but I can do some of that now sometimes. And the other thing is, um, I was a vast consumer of TV shows, books, movies, music, anything creative uh, would pour into me all the time. And now I don't watch many TV shows. I don't read or listen to many audio books. Um, I, I can't stay in that space for long periods of time. My brain falls out of that space after half. It has to be something truly engaging to grab me for a couple of hours. Um, the example I like to give is a couple of years ago, I went on holiday and brought all of Gaunt's Ghosts and read all of Gaunt's Ghosts in 12 days. And I don't know how many books that is, like 15 or 16 books. The last holiday I was on, I read the first three books of the Dune Saga and that's it. Um, and that took me all holiday to read all three. Um, and that's not fruit because I didn't want to, but that's because... I get certain foot on my brain. It just, it doesn't. Yeah. So I'm getting better, but there is some cognitive scarring there, which is going to be there forever and ever and ever, but that's the way it is. And that's why you should look after your mental health. And that's why if you're getting stressed and anxious at work, anyone listening and they're getting the first signs, if you have a, if, if your stress and anxiety at work or at home is affecting you, seriously i mean everyone can have some stress and anxiety guys and stress and anxiety is a good thing it's our fight or flight response or our free still response it allows tennis players to play better tennis it allows quipster to focus strongly on smashing mick with his orcs and destroying him and ruining his but so stress and anxiety is okay but if you get it constantly over time over time over time over time it'll start to rewire your neural chemistry and it will screw you in the longer term. And the first symptoms to look for are sleep and bowel or dietary issues. Your sleep will get affected, you'll start getting headaches and you'll get IBS, irritable bowel syndrome or dietary issues, you start putting on weight or start losing weight, um, all sorts of gut issues. Uh, And it shows in the gut clearly, first of all, because most of your serotonin that you produce in your brain, 80% of it is absorbed by the gut so that's why you start having um, significant gut issues. After that, it just gets worse. But so if you're feeling really stressed, really anxious for long periods of time, and you know it's affecting your sleep at home, and you know that you've got some gut issues, maybe some headaches as well, maybe some lower back pain, you need to do something about it. You need to talk to someone about it right now, because... It will scar you permanently in the longer run. If you keep if you keep going and going and going and going, it will just get worse and 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 worse. Your body 
will do anything it can to protect your mind, including shutting itself down um, bit by bit by bit in order to keep your mind alive. Um, it'll do everything it can to tell you that something's wrong. And if it's doing that to you right now, then please see someone, ring a doctor, talk to your wife, your husband, whoever, um, share. Because one of the things I didn't know is this stuff, there's people out there who know about this and I've been doing science on it for, and know it inside and out. And they can help you. And they're like, oh yeah, you've got this and this is how we treat that. And then we can do that and they can literally help you. It's amazing. So yeah, sorry, went off a bit there. Hi, <laughs> how are you? I'm good. I'm good. But the, out of all of that, the question I was going to ask is... You mentioned there were a couple of moments where you sort of like felt content, essentially, where you were like, yeah, life is good. What happened in those moments that made you think that? You were like, yeah, okay, this is this is pretty okay. I can remember one really clearly, actually. Mm -hmm. Really clearly. It was just after the lockdown last year, the second or third or 17th lockdown, I forget when. <laughs> And I was driving back from my friend's house, Alex SEO, and we'd played some 40K. And I'm driving home, and it's a 20 minute drive, and I think it's April or May, and I had the music on, and the weather was good, and I just played 40K with my friend. And I remember feeling really strange, and so, my mind's racing. This is a lot of mind racing, a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress, a lot of this. And I'm driving a car and da 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 da. And I could feel this weirdness, like what's going on? What's going? On? And I remember for the first few minutes not understanding what I was feeling, because all the feelings I'd been feeling for so long were horror, were negative, were pain, were this, were that. Like what's this? What's this? What's this? And then I realised that. I was feeling, I forget what it was. Um, was it fun? It was, yeah, I remember thinking, not fun, this is fun. Yeah, I, that was it. Joy. It wasn't joy, it was like, it was, because it's all wound up in the mental stuff, because you overanalyze your feelings as well. So as soon as you start to feel anything, you're like, what is that? Where is that coming from? Is it the right thing? And I was, and it was like, it was the realization that I had had fun and driving home with the music on in the sunshine. This was fun. The act of driving was fun and I just had fun. And I felt that weird thing that I was fighting against and fighting against. And it was like, I, I, I feel this is fun. I'm having fun. I'm feeling the fun feeling. And then it broke through because... I couldn't remember the last time, genuinely remember the last time I'd felt fun. Just, this is fun. I'm having fun. I had fun and I'm having fun driving right now. Because fun is harmless. If you have fun, if I have fun, it doesn't hurt anyone. Fun's harmless by definite in most cases. So uh, uh, it's fun. And I broke out into a massive smile, like a Richter smile and I remember thinking again over analyzing why am I smiling so much I couldn't stop smiling and I got home and I got into the house and started laughing and Kat said right you're having a freak out while you're laughing and I stopped laughing and I like, ah, no no, no I'm out. I feel fun I feel it's like and my face hurts from smiling so much it's like it hurt from smiling so that was the first time I'd felt genuine innocent fun in I don't know how many years, just naked fun, not which was uncontaminated by anything else. Driving back from my friend's house after playing 40k in the sunshine with the windows down and the music on was fun. That's the first time it struck me like, ah, this is good. That's an amazing memory. I genuinely love that. That's like one of the most wholesome things I think I've ever heard. Just like, yes, I, I actually allowed myself the memory of feeling the feeling of fun. Yay. I remember explaining it to... This is the weird thing. 
about my mental journey is there are occasions now I said this to Kat and I said this to Liam once and when I was out at the Factorum there are occasions now like when someone gives me a cup of coffee and I'm genuinely it was at the Factorum forget who got me a cup of coffee and gave me a cup of coffee and it's like oh wow I've got a cup of coffee and I could feel it like this is really nice of you mm. and that it's like Sometimes it feels like I'm feeling for the first time ever. Like, oh, that's that genuine, honest gratefulness. I'm feeling gratefulness. Like, oh, that's what gratefulness feels like. You you hear people say, I'm grateful. Do you are you really? Do you feel grateful? Well, I felt, oh, and it, it lifts me to a a level that feels like I've never felt grateful before so there are occasions where I felt grateful and, I, I, and there's occasions where watching a sunset or something it's like I'm seeing it for the first time the brain I'm in a such a weird new uh, this version of me mentally is a different version of me that existed before so I am eating occasionally drinking coffee eating biscuits or watching sunrises for the first time and fee feeling it for the first time or in a brand new way in a way that i've never yeah it's hard to explain i think you've just explained it really really well i think the only the only thing i would add sort of as a caveat and like i've i've experienced this and it would be interesting to, to hear your your take on this too I think a lot of people expect depression to just be like, I am sad all the time. And I think it can manifest like that. But when I sort of like went through like my last depressive episode, it wasn't a feeling of overwhelming sadness all the time. It was just an absence of all emotion. And so when you say like, I'm experiencing, experiencing this emotion for the first time, like, yeah, I, I totally get it. And was that your experience of it as well? Like this, like absolute absence? On the best days, it was an absence. When it was manageable, it was an absence. Okay. The way I have tried to explain it to family is because. When, when you say, oh, I'm depressed, people think, oh, they're sad, get over it. Or When a doctor says depressed, they mean something medical, like an injury. There's chemicals, there's imbalance, there's, it can be measured. Um, one of the ways I've tried to explain it to friends and family is, it's like being drunk, but not. Now, bear with me. Mm. When you're drunk, or when you're on drugs... You are you, but a different version of you, right? So the world, the world feels different when you're drunk and you think differently when you're drunk and you see things differently when you're drunk. And when you're depressed, you see things differently. You feel things differently. You think about things different. The world you live in is not the same world that normal people live in normal quotes, bunny ears, you know, uh, you, you're not in the same space. That's why it's so difficult to express how you're feeling, how you're thinking, your moods, what's going on internally to someone who is normal, because words can't convey what it's like in that place. Uh, what it, where you are, what you're thinking, what you're feeling, this language, this world, the structures that we've built around ourselves don't live there. You live there. So sometimes the absence of feeling, just emptiness, not feeling anything for a very long, 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 long time. For me, that was the background. For me, that was... 
that that was the background upon which everything else, all the other catastrophes was was arranged. Feeling of hopelessness, that there is no hope. Feeling of, you don't want, I didn't want anything. I didn't want food, didn't want... People say, oh, do you want to go out? Sure. There's no wanting. There's no forward motion. There's no reason to do. Um, thinking um, and trying to understand something is impossible when the foundations of thought and your absolute foundations of ra reason you're questioning them and are broken so even even the cognitive process is just yeah so but yeah and then you i could feel and most of the time and what i felt most of the time was uh you felt the worst you felt the worst about yourself all the time and the worst about other people all the time you always so you 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 your opinion of yourself was the worst your opinion of others was the worst and your opinion of your feelings was the worst and then there's the fear and then there's the hopelessness and then there's the pain and then there's the yeah it just it uh, it's the close it's the closest you can it kills 10% of people. 10% of people who have it die. It's, it's, as a disease, it is up there with cancer and it's bad. Um, yeah. So yeah, when I couldn't feel anything at all, that was a good day. <laughs> I mean, the, wow. the, the forward motion and the stopping of things. I mean, catatonic depression and all sorts of different, there's different depressions out there. Um, yeah, it, it, it could get much, much worse for me. I think part of the problem for me was, uh, I am someone who will keep going, <laughs> as we said at the beginning of the video. And as I think I said in that depression video that I did at my sixth year anniversary, I'm the guy who'll keep going. I'm the guy at the factory working days and working nights, keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going. Um, I was the guy at school to, yeah, I, I kept going. Um, and that was definitely not what you should do. So I was probably clinically depressed for over a year before it was prescribed. And then by that point, um, and then that's clinically depressed. And then before that, I, a, a good couple of years, two or three years of stress and anxiety and lots of physical symptoms and all the physical symptoms. Oh, now that's happened. Oh, fuck it. And, and then six months later, oh, there goes my back. Oh, fuck it. And then six months later, I'm oh, a skin complaint. So oh, it's all not related. It's all not related. And then depression and then a year of that and then prescription and then drugs and then and then da, da. and uh, strangely enough, my back's got better. I've had lower back pain for about five years, six years, five. Mm -hmm. And it's on the whole completely gone despite all the orthopedics and all the drugs and all the doctors and all the other stuff that I've had for lower back pain for the last five, six years or the last six months, apart from every now and then it twinge for a week or two, it's gone. That's so the stage. completely <laughs> connected to, you know, the back. spine is part of the brain, right? If you go and see a brain surgeon, they also do spines it's gone. Yeah, I, I had back Amazing. pain so bad uh, it, that it would make me limp. It would seize up my legs. I, re I remember quite a few occasions at work where I was limping around the factory for weeks at a time. Um, and then symptom of depression, lower back pain. Mm. Uh, but of course, so, I the doctors treated it as something completely separate and um, tried to cure it many, 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 many times. But... Uh, 